Hello and welcome to Homescreen. I'm Joe Colchester, Product Manager here at 11FS Pulse. Homescreen is brought to you by 11FS Pulse, our collection of over 4,000 user journeys from banks and fintechs from all over the world. So head over to pulse.11fs.com to request a free demo to see how others are solving their UX challenges. In today's episode, we are joined by Kitty Sadler, Product Manager at the Credit Kudos team, to talk about their new decision engine, Assembly, and how it helps lenders automate and scale with minimal tech integration. How are you doing today, Kitty? Yeah, good, thank you. It's perfect temperature. How about you? It is the perfect temperature and also my fan's dead, so uh, that's even more ideal. Uh, <laughs> thanks for coming back to the show. Uh, you obviously on before, uh, very successful episode. Um, so it's um, you're kind of in our hall of fame because not many people come back for a second time. So thank you for that. <laughs> thanks for having me. No, no worries at all. Um, so just to kind of recap the viewers, um, can you just tell us a little bit about um, Credit Kudos? Sure. Um, Credit Kudos is a challenger credit bureau. Uh, we help lenders to provide people with fair and affordable credit. Uh, to do this, we harness, harness financial behavior data that consumers consent to share through open banking. Um, and as a bureau, we combine this data with loan outcome data and we use machine learning to uh, predict credit risk and affordability uh, more accurately than previously possible with just traditional credit bureau data. For lenders, this means faster and more accurate credit decisions uh, and serving more people and this creates better outcomes for consumers and it's based on data that they've consented to provide uh, and we primarily provide uh, APIs and tools for lenders uh, to make automated real-time decisions including an open banking decision engine which is what we're going to look at today and uh, we also have an affordability and risk dashboard for money underwriting uh, data science and analysis. Okay, sure. And, and you mentioned open banking there. Um, how much has that been a, a game changer in the lending space? Uh, massively. Uh, traditional credit bureau data is based on like a, a handful of pieces of information about how risky somebody is. Uh, and for loads of people that this information's like missing or, or inaccurate, um, you know, yeah. people who um, maybe have an adver adverse credit history, but are good now, or people who uh, are like have net new to credit or new to the country or been you know living at home and open bank so open mm. banking data has like much greater coverage uh, it's more up to yeah. date and it's sort of infinitely richer um it contains like thousands of clues about how risky somebody is and, and what they can afford and when you you combine that with machine learning and loan performance uh data you can model like eligibility with real precision great and, and those clues and, and a kind of access to data is that expanding more and more um, as open banking expands more and more, or is it more the tools to analyze that data, those are growing more? I think it's the, I mean, open banking is expanding in terms of around payments uh, and open finance, mm. and, and there are all sorts of initiatives. Um, but I think for us at the moment, it's a, it's also about understanding that data better and better. And we, we're constantly kind of adding new, new insights and uh, scores and, and as we kind of collect more outcome data and as we improve all of our kind of models that, that go into that. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, and who are your competitors in this space, would you say? To be honest, we compete most closely with traditional credit bureaus. Um, mm -hmm. I think we, we differentiate from them because we're sort of laser focused on just decisioning with open banking data and we really believe in yeah. it and, and it's really important to us that we're like the best at it. And um, we're also like motivated to shake up the traditional model and get better outcomes for consumers. And that's part of our mm. business model in a way that's kind of unique to us. And we're a bit more tech and product first, so we can move really quickly. Uh, we like we like to think we execute really well and, and we make use of some really exciting machine learning. Absolutely. And I guess that brings on to our next point, which is, um, can you just tell us about Assembly? Uh, yeah, um, sure. Um, Assembly is a an engine for making lending decisions. Um, it basically enables lenders to create, deploy and adjust automated credit decisions um, using our insights uh, with minimal or no technical integration. Um, I've been working on Assembly since it was conceived. So yeah, it's really exciting to, to see it out in the world. It's it nice. basically, it's a game changer because many lenders, basically many lenders want to do automated real-time decisioning um, or serve new populations, um, both of which are good for consumers as well. 
Um, but crucially, they struggle to kind of lock in the technical and analytical resources, firstly, to, to build that decisioning, and then secondly, to adjust it on an ongoing basis as they learn from the data. And basically, assembly enables lenders to automate their manual underwriting, saving like thousands of hours without using any, not single piece of code uh, or analytical work. And then it then enables them, if they want to, to roll out real-time decisions in customer journeys with just like a small one-off uh, piece of technical work. And once they've done that once, they can continually adjust their policies and swap in new policies and manage multiple populations without any technical resource at all and, and like far less analytical time. So no data exports or yeah. spreadsheets and basically anybody yeah. in their team can use assembly to analyze their whole strategy. Yeah. So it's primarily about um, speeding the process up dramatically uh, for the for the lenders. Um, and uh, is, does it does it also give access to um, uh, kind of credit access to, to people that would otherwise not have it, or um, does it just speed up that process that you were already doing at Credit Kudos? I guess uh, like our insights, um, making sense of our insights, uh, or sorry, making sense of open banking data with our insights is is what increases access to credit. You know, we basically find uh, populations that are underserved by traditional credit segments, and we look at their actual eligibility and their financial behaviour and and how risky they really are and how affordable they really are. Where assembly comes in is it helps uh, lenders to serve those populations in ways that, like in more efficient ways. And that might be the difference between them serving that population and not. So it might be that that population, yeah. it, the lender can't serve those people manually. Um, so they'll, they'll just leave those, they just won't go near that population. But this basically enables them to really easily say, okay, we're gonna try this population, we're gonna forecast what the policy looks like before we do anything, and then we can constantly analyze and adjust our policies uh, as we as we learn from this new data. Yeah, okay, got it. Um, and how's the response been to it so far? Uh, yeah, it's been it's been great. Um, we, um, I've got a sort of like quote from one of our early adopters, um, cool. who's uh, John from Car Finance uh, 247. Um, who we uh, yeah. worked super closely with, um, and he said uh, it took us about half an hour to set everything up, uh, test everything, um, and then sh get the underwriting team to review it. Uh, so we know exactly what we're going to get, which I was yeah very super happy about. Nice, that's that sounds great. Thank you for that, John. <laughs> um, so in terms of um, uh, in terms of like you mentioned the the kind of populations that we're benefiting uh, that previously it wouldn't as well. Um, who are kind of, um, in terms of the, the clients you're looking for, who are the kind of ideal um, clients you're looking for? Or is it just a kind of wide net um, and you just sort of go out there and see and see um, who best fits the product? Um, yeah, in the, in the um, research phase, we basically identified four kind of core lender personas and they span different types of lending. Um, the first right. is, is lenders that have um, kind of complex or legacy tech that makes it difficult for them to implement new processes and be agile enough to continually adjust these to optimize performance. Uh, the second group that we found, they just don't have any resources in-house, so changes are, are super expensive. Um, another group uh, have basically identified an opportunity to target new underserved segments, um, but the kind of technical overhead of that means that the strategy ends up getting kind of deprioritized in favor of tactics that yeah. are easier, though potentially less lucrative. And then the kind of final final group is that is high tech lenders, so they have the resource uh, for integration, but they basically find that assembly helps them to move really really quickly because they can constantly review and adjust policies without kind of having to schedule and use their their resource. Um, and we launched with two two initial lenders uh, right at the beginning, so Admiral, uh, their their finance arm, um, and they wanted to basically automate their manual underwriting without any technical work. And then, uh, as I mentioned, 24-7 Money, um, who are the lender of Car Finance 24-7. Um, and they basically wanted to serve new populations. Uh, without traditional data, they were declining 30,000 people a month. Uh, and they needed a way to basically identify the credit worthy portion of, of um, this population without like a massive manual effort and to be able to regularly evolve their policies as they learn from the data without needing to, to write any code. Okay, great. Well, it sounds like that's quite a... Um wide spectrum of clients there um, and um, how long has it been live for actually? Released in May we did a, a kind of an early adopter program uh, so we could just mm -hmm. kind of work really closely with some key clients and, and uh, iron out any any issues 
and sure. it's now on sort of general release and we're onboarding a whole bunch of our clients to it. Okay, great. Well, let's, um, let's take a look at it. Right. Cool. So this is basically uh, as a sort of lender, like a head of risk or a policy manager. Uh, this is a little engine and you can basically just just build um, build your rules. So you basically um, build rules based on credit kudos features that pass, fail or refer applicants. And you can layer up rules um, with kind of quite a lot of sophistication. So you can have different levels of, of um, operators to build like really nuanced policy rules. You can also um, basically uh, quite easily uh, in real time pull in um, data that isn't credit kudos data. So you can make decisions that are based on a mixture of credit kudos data and other data. So an example of that, like you might want to say that the credit kudos predicted income must be greater than or equal to uh, the, in the income that the applicant stated during the application process. Um, or you might want to say that the monthly repayment amount of the loan uh, must be less than the uh, what Credit Kudos says is the affordability or predicts for the affordability of the customer. Once you've applied that decision, once you've set your decision live, it automatically applies to every report that, that comes in. Uh, so rather than an underwriter having to look at it, it automatically will give a decision and then the underwriter can really easily um, go in and um, just check the decision or filter and just look at the referrals. And this is our money underwriting platform, Atlas. So this is uh, the, what the underwriter can do. They can just basically see see uh, exactly why that person referred and really quickly check it. And it takes maybe 20 seconds rather than 10 minutes. Um, so just just for a really basic question, that, that list of people that we're seeing, um, who are they? And um, uh, yeah, can you just tell us a little bit about when I, where they've come yeah, from? Yeah, sure. So um, if you're one of our lenders, these are customers mm. that have already connected through open banking, through Credit Kudos. Um, and they are, yeah. they've completed an application journey, um, and you're, um, yeah, they basically when you assembly shows you a, a preview of a policy on your existing population, so you can basically test mm -hmm. how the population, you know, what the population's like, what your pass rate will be before you roll it out or before you roll out any changes, and then once you deploy mm -hmm. your policy, it will automatically apply uh, to new applicants in real time, and then you can also review the results uh, and and review the pass rate. Uh, as you go in assembly. Okay, great. Um, and I think I think you, you touched upon it there. Um, but can you just talk us through the the process of setting these different rules um, and yeah. kind of putting them into the process? Yeah, sure. Um, it's super straightforward. Uh, I'd almost say it was fun. Um, maybe not quite. Um, but basically, you just uh, you know you just add add little blocks. Um, you can add like a condition. Um, and then within that, you can add rules and then you add multiple conditions and you choose how those are combined. So you can say, you know, condition A and condition B, or you can say condition A is, you know, has to be rule, um, rule A and B or con condition B. Uh, and you can move around, pass, fail and refer. So basically, we've just built something that can replicate kind of any combination of quite sophisticated policy rules. And you basically just select um, the, the kind of attributes that you want to build the rules based on. Got it. And um, you said they refer. Can you just tell us what you mean by that? Yeah, sure. So I guess um, assembly lets you basically automate the people that you're, you know, you definitely uh, fit your criteria and you definitely want to approve. And then also the people that you definitely don't want to waste time looking at, you know, that are definite declines. Mm -hmm. And there's there's usually for most under for most lenders there's a a borderline in the middle that needs a manual assessment. And they would do they would do this in Atlas, but also we we layer the the kind of outcome of the decision onto Atlas to make that even quicker. I see. So in in those instances with um, those who have been referred, um, it then goes into a manual process, but one that, that's assisted by Atlas. Exactly. So. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So it's a it's like a underwriters can focus on like the key, um, you know, the the people that are most marginal. Um, but they can do that quicker mm -hmm. because they can see, okay, well, this person was referred based on this particular criteria. Yeah. Okay, great. I mean, and in terms of um, th these people, that they've gone through the application flow um, on the lender's site or, or platform, um, and uh, they've consented to the open banking um, things that you require in order to get that data. Um, have you, is there anyone else you've partnered with in order to, to get that data um, and, and use it? So. Um, 
you know, we we sort of we do it end to end. We have a, a like a connect flow, which is a a plugin that manages it all and informs the gets consent from the user and goes off to the bank and um, kicks off the process of creating a report. And we have a few different ways that lenders can kind of drop that into application journeys. Okay, cool, got it. Um, so let's just take a look at another journey from Credit Kudos. Right. So this is basically where you've designed a policy and you want to see how it performs on your existing population before you do anything. So you can basically see your pass rates and then you can make an adjustment to the policy, preview it again and see how your pass rate would change. And then once you're happy um, with, you know, like, okay, for, for um, the last 5,000 reports, uh, you know, I'm going to have a pass rate of 48% and a refer rate of 12% and maybe you've spot checked specific reports. When you're happy, you, you hit set live and that's when your policy starts operating in real time. And then that's when you can either get your underwriters to kind of see these, you know, pass, fail and refer queues, or you can go the step further and you can do the kind of single one-off API integration and that those real-time decisions will kind of, will be able to happen in, in instant decisioning and in, in customer journeys. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, it's good to see it um, kind of actually in action there. Um, in terms of um, the kind of challenges making this, um, designing and developing it, because there's obviously a design aspect that goes into it as well, um, I should, which I think is just very well done. It's very kind of simple, but effective there. Um, and obviously making use of those um, kind of overlays that we're seeing. Um, can you just, just uh, yeah, walk us through the kind of the journey in that? Yeah, um, yeah, well, I uh, thank you. I'll pass that on to our head of design. She'll thank be really you. pleased. Um, it's a really complicated, like it's quite a complex product, um, but mm -hmm. we knew we had to make it just unbelievably simple. Um, so we invested a huge amount of time in the in the product research phase to make sure that, uh, yeah, we developed something that was like, intuitive and, and had all the right language uh, so that people yeah. can kind of build their, their policies in Atlas, with, uh, sorry, in assembly without a big learning curve, without having to learn anything, you know, that that's the opposite of what we wanted to do. Uh, what that meant was we, we tested like a lot of different uh, terms and options and words and um, there was a lot of kind of trial and error with research participants. Um, yeah. We also had to ensure that the rules builder was simple to use but gave you all the options that you might need for your policy because policies can be quite kind of complex and layered. Uh, mm -hmm. So we spent a lot of time uh, trying to break it basically, trying to think of every possible policy and combination of logical rules that you could have uh, on, you know, paper and whiteboards and, and things like that. That was probably the hardest bit. Absolutely. And, and did you do that with uh, kind of real vendors uh, as well as, you know, people who would actually use the um, uh, feature going forward? Yeah, absolutely. So it's, a lot of it we did from our own understanding of, of just like speaking to all of our lenders about their policies. And then we had some yeah. Yeah, amazing research participants that were uh, really yeah on board with the idea and, and helped us a lot. Okay, great. Um, any surprises that you found along the way in, the, in your research findings and, and the kind of the way that developed? Uh, there was a, I think I thought that um, there, I, I kind of had this idea of, of populations that I thought would be completely intuitive. Um, and it just like, I, maybe I didn't, didn't listen to my colleagues enough that it was like not that intuitive, but then I very quickly like learned in, in research that, uh, it, it, you know, it, the way that we fra framed it didn't really make sense. Um, and we sort of realized, we, we realized that it, it actually didn't, we didn't need it for the MVP and we thought we, we did. And it was really important that we'd, we'd surface that. And then that has given us time to like, to think it properly and, and make it super intuitive. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and in terms of um, kind of next steps um, and the kind of power of assembly, um, have you got anything in mind there? Um, yeah, uh, there's kind of three big directions. Um, I think one is is this thing that we just talked about, which is this, the segmentation. So mm -hmm. lenders will soon be able to kind of segment their populations. Um, they can do this currently in, in a sort of certain way, but it requires a bit more setup on their side. But basically lenders will be able to chop up their, their populations without any, any kind of tech work. So they might have a different income policy for self-employed and PAYE applicants. Um, or, you know, something like that. And that would help them to make even more kind of precise and accurate decisions. So that's one. Yeah. Um, we also are going to enable um, lenders to use assembly to 
build their own metrics and properties. Um, so for example, a custom risk indicator or a custom affordability calculation based on some specific of their sort of lending strategies and policies. Um, that was super exciting because we, you know, we need to think of a way to let people create stuff that we haven't thought of yet. So really interesting product yeah. challenge. Um, and then thirdly, we're planning to give assembly even more data science power, basically um, helping people to understand not just their pass rates, but also their default rates over time, and basically being able to break that down by, by segment. Um, and this will help lenders to better analyze kind of risk across their whole portfolio and shape the kind of better lending, lending strategies. Okay, great. Um, and is, um, you know, the, those three things you mentioned there, is that really the, the, the broader direction of, of credit kudos as well? Is assembly driving all of this um, or is it just one part of it? It's, it's one part of it. Um, yeah. There's sort of, we're, we're basically doing kind of more, more and more jobs for, uh, yeah. for more and more kinds of lenders. You know, we're doing, um, we're doing payments, um, we're doing things across the whole, like all sorts of jobs around originations, but yeah, definitely giving lenders uh, not just data to like make complete different decisions, but also giving them the tools to, to not have to think, to think about it, to just be able to see exactly how it will fit into their process, have all the data at their like fingertips and all the analytics and be able to just implement something really easily. Okay, great. Um, and if people wanted to find out more about that, um, is there anywhere they could go or um, um, can they follow you or is there anything you can suggest there? Yeah, um, you can go to creditkudos.com um, or, you know, if you for some reason wanted to, you can also find me on uh, LinkedIn. Um, yeah, it's my name, Kissy Sadler. Uh, thank you so much, Kitty. Uh, it's been great to have you on the show and talk about um, assembly. It's really exciting to see all of that. Okay. Um, and just before we wrap up, we're just going to quickly go into our Pulse Pick of the Week. This week's Pulse Pick of the Week goes to Robinhood's crypto journey. The popular US trading platform makes it very easy to explore different cryptos and conveniently breaks them down into different categories. Prices dynamically change, relevant news can be accessed, and the purchasing experience is exceptionally straightforward and engaging. A Tron-like interface really is something to behold. Thanks for watching today's show. Um, if you want to see more journeys like this, please have a, head over to pulse.11fs.com to find out more and catch up on our home episodes. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Kitty. <laughs>